You're yeah, it's talking about cortical thickness and amygdala size. Mm. I'm not <laughs> sure what that is, but it sounds dirty. Get off of my computer. It's your brain. You bum cat. You didn't hear Hunter. Well, he but said- as soon as Chris got on <laughs> camera, Hunter said, What's the fall? <laughs> <laughs> Show us that leg, damn it. <laughs> I, I don't know that I like that, but I also don't know that I hate it. <laughs> so. Literally. Leg. Leg. You are leg. leg. <laughs> Tim is cheering for your leg. You got a nice leg. Tim's a little creepy about it, but I agree. Here, I'll put it down. There you go, Harley. And then you can. Look at you. Show, show the leg. Show, show the, the leg. leg. I would chant, but there's hey! no reason to. Hey, there it is. <laughs> Crush up. <laughs> I'd tip you if I was there. I wouldn't, but I'm broke. <laughs> I'm not broke. He said he would tip you if he was there. I'm in the middle of a move. Here. Hunter said you can't afford him. Oh, I believe that. Hello and hello, it is May 8th, and welcome to the Always More Podcast, where we believe there is always more room at the table for honest questions, meaningful conversations, and deeper understanding. Today on the pod, we're talking about a whole bunch of crazy stuff. We're talking about missing nukes, bulls on parade, teenage brain development, and so much more. But first, I am your host, Tim Lichty, and sitting next to me is my best friend in the whole entire world, Christopher Thomas Ford. Yo, yo. And joining us from the land that has many tornadoes, that is Harley Bianco. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, I got to ask, Harley, are you are you safe? Are you, uh, I know that this time of year, there's a whole bunch of craziness happening uh, around your neck of the woods. How, how's it going up there? It's actually pretty decent. We're farther north in Kansas, so it's not as terrible. But we have been having a lot of like thunderstorms and rainstorms. It's been a lot of tornado um, walk- watches. So just like kind of being on the lookout for tornadoes possibly forming, but there hasn't been any warnings. Okay, that's good. So I did, however, last weekend I went to Tierra's Bachelorette in Dallas and driving on the way back, I got like right into Oklahoma and I was stuck in an hour of traffic and I was like, this better not be for nothing. Cause you know, sometimes traffic is just for nothing and it's really, nothing. yeah. Um, but no, I got to the end of it. And there was a tornado that had blown through the town oh, well, across I-35 oh, and do destroyed it. a, yeah, the, the, that'll do it. Um, <laughs> it, it, it like destroyed part of a Dollar Tree like warehouse. Oh, no. Oh, is that yeah. why the prices went up to $1. twenty-five? <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps. Get but yeah, tired. I was like, that's crazy. Of all, all places to have a Dollar Tree warehouse. Yeah, it was really not good. That was my first time ever seeing, like, tornado wreckage. Mm. And so, like, seeing, like, shrapnel, like, everywhere and, um, like, car just, like, kind of crushed. Yeah. Like, I was like, that's crazy. And it just kind of went on for a couple miles after that. And I was like, wow. You know, when I was Dangerous. in Master's Commission, we did cleanup for the tornado that went through Joplin. Oh, yeah. Mm. It was intense. It was a big one. Yeah. Oh, man, that's crazy. I keep seeing TikToks of tornadoes, too, and it'll be like somebody's, ah, I'm in Kansas, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you better keep that over there. But <laughs> I realized that when they said, like, it sounds like a train horn, mm-hmm. it like really it does. does. Yeah. It's terrifying. Crazy. My mom used to like, be a storm chaser when I was a kid, so I what? followed many tornadoes. <laughs> Dude, are you joking? No, not at all. Against my will, mind you. Yeah, that because doesn't again, sound safe. I was a child. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Jeez. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you guys remember that F five tornado that hit Gerald a while back, like in the nineties? Um, I mean, I was a baby, so not really. Yeah, I wasn't birthed. You, no, Harley, you were not. But Tim, you were. You yeah. would have been like five or six because I was oh. about five or six, and we watched all three of those tornadoes that combined into the giant F five that destroyed Gerald. Oh wow. Skip right over us. I think my mom's got footage of it somewhere. That's crazy. 
Wow. Well, uh, shall we move on from this morbid topic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're moving along. Uh, but, hey, this is going to be a short episode. Uh, we decided... You it, hope. <laughs> I said this off camera, and I said this while Chris wasn't here, but I'm going to say it now. I have a hypothesis, and I feel like he's going to try to live up to it now that I'm saying it out loud. But I have a hypothesis is that the less words there are on the notes, the more that Chris's like time takes up, like the more time there will be. It's yeah. like it's like gas, like how you learn in science, like the 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 gas just takes up the room. You know what I'm saying? Are you calling? You don't have any gases? structure, so he just yes. it's to yapping. <laughs> I don't like the way He's I'm like, being I attacked fix. right now. I gotta fill this somehow. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> so. <Boo. laughs> So, anyways, uh, it's just the three of us. Uh, the uh, we're in season four, right? You hardly you were with us for season two and three, right? I'm not remembering mm-hmm. that wrong. Okay, okay. So it's a season two and three crew, and uh, we we decided to create as oh, excuse me, basically just create as simple of an episode as possible. Basically, as close to what Chris wants as possible. Yeah, but you still have to have notes. I do and organization. I said as close to as close to as I, I am currently you feeling comfortable with. Notes. I hear you. We will get there. I'll ease you in, baby bird. Don't worry. <laughs> so, what's our first segment? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say today we're going to talk about uh, some random things, some news events, but also just random topics. But we do have some segments, and our first segment today is the one and only Wreck and Rev. Oh, yes, this is the part of the show where we like to recommend and review some things. Chris, go for it. So, I have started watching this show on Netflix that is pretty popular. Super legit. It is exactly as cool as I thought it was going to be. Called Three Body Problem. Are you familiar with this? Um, only because you've talked about it. So, in no, science, I'm... there's a three body problem um, involving, like, if there's a binary star system where you have two stars rotating each other, what happens if there's a three body star system? And that's where it takes its name. Um, The whole premise of the show is that a fateful decision made in 1960s China reverberates in the present where a group of scientists partner with a detective to confront an existential planetary threat. Hmm. Basically, in the 60s, this woman who is the daughter of two really crazy smart scientists and college professors ends up in a prison camp in China. And while she's in that prison camp in China, she gets noticed by some of the scientists in the military and they take her from the prison camp to their military base and tell her, hey, you can't leave. So, like, she's got nothing else to do, nothing else to live for, so she decides she's going to make some dangerous decisions in the pursuit of science. She sends a signal from a satellite that they're working on uh, to communicate out of space directly into our sun, uses it to amplify the signal, and it gets sent to a alien group four light years away. So they decide they're going to come to Earth, essentially, and try to find a place to live and coexist with us because their planet is actually in a three-body system. Hmm. And their planet is literally just being destroyed like once every random amount of time. Because in a three-body system with one planet, it rotates around one sun and then the gravity from the other pulls it and then the gravity from the other pulls it. And it's just like there's no consistency to it. So they're trying to get somewhere safe, Earth. And it's about the aliens, the people that they're communicating with, and scientists that live here that realize that those aliens can absolutely break physics. And it's really cool. Nice. Sounds very complicated. It, it, it's it very sciencey. It, very it's sci-fi. definitely very sciencey, very sci-fi. It's one of my favorite styles of show, though. Um, some of the actors are Thomas Wade. Uh, I don't know if you guys watch Game of Thrones, but Sir Davros. Oh, yeah. Uh, Benedict Wong. Oh, Wong. From, uh, um, what you call it? Uh, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh! Um, who else is in it? The the guy that plays Sam Turley in Game of Thrones as well. Oh, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, John Bradley, that's his name. And then Jonathan Price is also in it. So pretty cool stuff, pretty cool staff. Cool. They do a really good job of showing like real science, but still science fiction-y. Mm-hmm. And I'm all about it. Okay, I'm on board. So check it out. It's on Netflix. 
I think I should. Let's see, baller. Harley, Yerp. you got it next. Okay, so I have like two things because one is a thing. Well, they both been out for a while, but like one was like a a rewatch that I was like, I need to have an honorable mention. I think. Hmm. But my first one is a little video game, and it's called Post Mouse, and it's free on Steam. I don't know what other consoles, engines, etc. that it's available for, but I do know it's on the computer. Um, and you play as a little mouse. Hunter's watching me. <laughs> Creepy. Stop. <laughs> Anyways, but you play as a little mouse and you go and you deliver mail because the, um, what's it called? Postmaster? Yes. Yeah, yeah. He's like, our original carrier pigeon guy or whatever is nowhere to be found. So we need you to go run run this mail. And the little mouse is like, okay, <laughs> sounds good. And then he goes and runs the mail. But it's like such a pretty, like, um, what's the word? Like the graphics are pretty decent considering that it's a free game. Oh, okay. Right. And it's very like, um, Cottage Corey. Mm. Very cute. Okay. Love Cottage Corey yeah. games. I love it. I finished it in like two days because I started it late the first day and then I finished it the next day. Wow. But it was really good. And you follow like a little storyline of learning why the world is now run by animals and people and blah, blah, blah. Mm. Yeah, it's really cute. I'm good with that. Wow, very cool. What was your other thing? I'm going to fight him. So my second one is Knives Out. Oh, Because... Not. Um, Hunter and I were scrolling through the Netflix and we saw the glass onion one and we've already seen that like twice or whatever. And so we were like, we really want to watch Knives Out, like the first one. Yeah. And so we went on Prime, Prime and watched it through there. And it's just so good. Yeah. I forgot how good the, the one was, but you. you have to buy it now. So I haven't seen either of those. Hey, well, good. For, hey, good news for both of y'all. Y'all can watch it free on my server. Mm, well, Hunter already nope. bought it, so. Well, but I will use that in the future. You should. You should. We great. should probably use that more often. Honestly, I'll I send agree. you the link. I agree. Get you guys going. Just uh, make sure that it's working. Through no fault. Make sure of that it's working. Own. Yeah, through no fault of his own. Tim has had to fix that thing like six times in the past week because it just keeps shutting down. Uh, to throw something at him. Did All you right. have much on there? I said it was no fault of your own. It works. It works. Okay, so there was an update that happened, or it must have been an update because it basically required me to go into the router and change something. And but it didn't require that before, so it must have been an update or something. So, anyways, I don't know. I don't know. Somebody's trying to hack you. Something's trying to happen, but we figured it out. It's working Crazy. now. We're all good here. We're all fine here. How are you? Okay. Uh, last one. Uh, mine. Uh, it's a, a movie by A24. If you know A24, they're the, not really indie anymore, but they're indie-ish of uh, Amazon uh, company. And uh, it's called Civil War. And if you were to watch the trailers, if you were to assume all of the posters, you would assume it was going to be like one of those summer flicks where it's like, all right, here we go. South versus North. You know, here we go. Is it like based off the American Civil War? Or? No, no. It's like what would happen if the Civil War was today? And, oh, okay. But it's not like what you probably think of it as. It's not necessarily a war film. Um, it's very much more a film about journalism. Uh, so here's a quick synopsis. A civil war has erupted between an authoritarian United States government and various regional factions. The president, who is serving a third term, claims that victory is close at hand. Renowned war photographer Lee Smith saves aspiring photojournalist Jesse from a suicide bombing in Brooklyn. Lee and her colleague Joel intend to travel to Washington, D.C. to interview and photograph the president before the city falls. Lee's mentor, Sammy, asked to accompany them as far as Charlottesville, where the Western forces of Texas and California are assembling. Uh, despite Lee's hesitance, she and Joel agree. Unbeknownst to Lee, Jesse convinces Joel to take her with them as well. And so it becomes this story about um, really just about following these journalists and what it means to be a journalist 
not in just a time of war, but in general, about trying to be unbiased. And so there's a quick uh, uh, review from Cinema Joe. He's on TikTok. He goes, as many have pointed out, it is far more interesting a movie in its discussion and depiction of journalism. The role of journalists play when the world they occupy themselves begin to uh, tear itself apart. In a world where the truth is constantly manipulated for partisan gain, at what point do journalists become soldiers? They may not be armed, but they still shoot, and arguably their shots change the world. Um, and I would argue, too, that this film is really about how much you gain you try to gain for yourself during war or how a lot of people try to do that it really just becomes about a different type of profiting and it's just it's it's a fantastic film it's incredibly well acted it's got Kristen Dunst uh Wagner uh Mora um Kirsten Dunst what did I say Kristen oh thank you um Kristen Kirsten K-R K-I let me look it up I don't believe you Look it up. Hey, dude, it's going to turn into another one of those episodes. I'm going to throw something at you. <laughs> I'm just trying You're right. To All right, you're right. Kirsten Dunst. Okay. Anyways, it's a fantastic film. Uh, highly encourage y- y'all to watch it, especially in the day and age that we are currently at because um, it's important. Journal- journalism is important. I'm going to be honest with you, man. I thought just by looking at the trailers and stuff that that was going to be like the, like the purge but conservative. Because, you know, mm. the, the messaging behind the purge is pretty liberal. Yeah, I thought it was going to be the purge, but on the conservative side, like this is what happens when liberals take over, right? You know, no, it's almost <laughs> it's almost annoyingly like in the middle. It's it's kind of like it 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 purposely doesn't pick a side throughout the whole film. Like I think the purpose, like you can even tell, like they chose California and Texas to be teaming up. And it's like, you know. That would never. That would happen. never happen. Yeah, and yeah. then like, like there's Not a Florida a million years. There's like a Florida alliance <laughs> with like Florida, but then like some northern states, and like it's just it's just a whole bunch of mess. I could um, see Florida and New York, maybe. No, no New Jersey only because they're crazy. No, they're not. But New they're York. different kinds of crazy. Yeah, exactly. I say New Jersey, and Florida, they give the same. The thing. whole third term president thing, really. That's what sold me on the right point of view. Oh on, yeah, on the conservative side, I was like, yeah, they're they're pushing that. Mm. Uh, do you know who plays the president? I do not. Uh, it is our guy Nick Offerman. Oh yeah, conservative wet dream. <laughs> Ironically, because he's not that way. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but it is really is fantastic. It's it's it is gruesome and it's really hard to watch uh, because they truly do show also the brutalities of war, um, and they. Don't keep it clean. It's rated R for a reason. Um, it's kind of like I I was shaking a little bit in the film just because it's like oh. if this kind of stuff were to happen, like it actually makes me scared. Like I don't want a civil war. And like I know I didn't want to before, but like, yep, just don't. I just don't. Yeah. So anyways, uh, that's our wreck and ref for this episode. And guys, uh, we are like a like as promised, we are keeping this thing short and to the point. And so we're going to go on a quick break, and then when we come back, we're just going to dive into some really interesting and uh, intriguing topics. So we'll be right back, guys. I'll miss you. All right, everyone. We are back. We got ourselves an episode here of some random, uh, I called this, what did I miss slash random shit? Uh, because I don't know what we're getting here really. Like I literally didn't even put my notes in here. Uh, I, I, I have just say- said, bring topics to talk about. Yes. So I wrote mm-hmm. in like three topics and we can talk about random stuff. <laughs> I included both somewhat serious and then sometimes funny. And then I see that everyone's kind of done the same. So, um, Chris, I guess we start with you, man. Pick what you want to start talking about first, and we can just dive into it. All right, let me look at these notes and see. Oh, that's too far away. I can't read it. <laughs> old man. I'm getting old, bro. He's <laughs> blind. Let's talk about that for a second. God, <laughs> let's put this in a bigger font. Um, okay, so Harley, this one's going to yes. be a little more directed towards you because, you know, you're the one that this question is posed to. Uh-huh. But there is a social media question going around that I would like to get some perspective on and maybe give a little bit of my own because as a man, that's what I do. 
Um, I want to know, would you rather be stuck in the woods oh. with a man or a bear? Yes. <laughs> we need to know your answer. Yes. It's always the bear. It's always, it's always the, bear. the bear. Yeah. <laughs> Should be the bear for everyone. Women have been picking the bear since 1991 with the release of Beauty and the Beast. I saw that on Facebook. Yeah, me too. That's why I said it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah, so that obviously it's, that's not really the the reason we're asking. We know the answer is going to be the bear. Mm -hmm. But what do you think about men that are upset about the fact that the answer is bear? I saw another one of those posts today by somebody I'm also friends with on Facebook. <laughs> um, and he was like, I can't believe like that's even worse. Just people who are assuming that I'm just a terrible person and a rapist and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah. brother. First of all, that's unfriend. concerning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but then like, there was like this woman in the comments who was like, kind of like trying to like explain it to him and be like, it's more so like, obviously, if it's somebody who like knows you, they're not going to be like, yeah, I would rather, I'd still choose the bear. You know, I mean, maybe to each their own. Um, but like the idea was like, I mean, it still could be somebody, you know, but um, obviously as we know that, um, but the idea that it's just like some man, you know, in the woods and it's just not great not a good time but um as i a lot of people have pointed out on like social media um i saw one today that was like um well the bear wouldn't like befriend me and then later try to trick me into having yeah. sex with them i've i've seen mm. a lot of stuff like that it's like the bear would just eat me to survive yeah mm-hmm. the man would feed me to his fantasies Mm. Or like yeah. the bear didn't or, pretend to be my friend first. Yeah. Or the bear wouldn't and record like a, it for his friends. Like that yeah. kind of stuff. And it's it's really heartbreaking, honestly. Like this I'm sure it was supposed to be like a a funny, like gotcha moment question initially, but mm-hmm. seeing all the responses of women that I follow and friends of mine, I'm just like, this is gut wrenching. Yeah. Because it's I true. saw one that was like, um, how did it go? It was something along the lines of like, um, at least the bear would leave me alone if we were good enough. Mm. Yeah. And I was like, Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Because for some people. That's what that, they want. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it's just crazy. I saw a TikTok so, of a guy that broke it down. And he was saying that for two reasons, the answer should always be the bear. Reason number one is, like, statistically, women are 100% safer with bears because there's only, like, seven bear murders of women throughout an entire year. Mm -hmm. And even if you take, like, population into consideration for that, men are still, I think it was, like, 500 times more likely to murder a woman. And that's just the ones that have been caught. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like he broke down all the math and it it was a a really long TikTok of him just doing math basically, which is again, I like watching TikToks of people doing the math for things like this, but I don't like this, the topic. Um, But then reason number two was because women said it was the bear. Just listen to women. Yeah, that's the main Mm. problem right now. Like, if you're a man getting upset by this, you are clearly the reason women are picking the bear. If you're not getting upset by it, you understand why women are picking the bear. Yeah, I've always like I've always loved the saying that says, "If it doesn't apply, let it fly." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, brother, That, that has saved me a lot of worrying in my life. Yeah, if it doesn't apply to you and you know that like inherently you know like i would never harm a person blah 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 whatever then it doesn't apply to you Mm -hmm. don't let it yeah don't let it sit on you if you're becoming defensive that's a 
tell 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 sign that you have some insecurity at least about it or that yeah. you might have a guilty feeling about it uh, mm-hmm. it's like it's it's so funny like when like men get so caught up in misogyny it's like ah, i'm not this thing i was like Okay, maybe you, like, if you're becoming so defensive about it, it, your body is reacting because it feels like it's being attacked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it's like, it's the not all men argument. Yeah, yeah. And we're like, yeah, we know it's not all men. Keanu Reeves would never. <laughs> but it's enough of us that there's a statistical reason women are picking the bear. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be all of them. The chances are much higher of survival with a random bear versus a random man. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw um, also that people were pointing out like the one guy who I guess lived in the wilderness with bears for like 10 years or something like that. Oh, yeah. That dude. Um, who eventually died because of a bear. Yeah. I mean, his but wife, then people right? pointed out like because he was being stupid. <laughs> he chose to be with the bears. Yeah, yeah. He, first of all, well, I would not never even be that, in that but, situation. But secondly, like the, the exact circumstances of his death were that like he was doing something that provoked a bear. Yeah. So the bear like obviously attacked him. But it was like if you had not done that, you would have been all good, yeah. baby. You would have been fine. And, and for the conservative assholes who were thinking in that moment right there, like, oh, of course, because they put themselves in that situation. No, 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 no. The bears don't have free will. They don't just randomly, like, they don't have the concept of, like, restriction and restraint. Humans do. That's... Yeah. Mm. It And that's been the biggest argument for, like, well, if I'm going to die either way, I would pick the bear because... The bear is just doing it out of instinct. It's not exactly. a conscious yeah. choice. And then I saw yeah. I saw one guy uh, having the conversation with his wife. And this one, it, it bothers me because it shouldn't have to get to this point. But sometimes any push is a good push towards the right direction. Uh, but the guy was talking to his wife and he was like, well, I mean, if you decide to fight a man, like you can fight him back and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, okay. So would you rather your daughter be in the woods with a random man or a bear? Yeah. And he was like, well, I mean, it depends, I guess. The the man, the bear, blah, blah, blah. Would you rather your daughter be in the woods with a woman or a bear? And immediately he was like, woman. woman. Oh. And like that registered for him. Like, I would rather my daughter be with a random woman than a random man and i would also my daughter be with a random bear than a random man yeah mm-hmm. so like what what's the what's the problem there it's the man the man is the problem yeah yep i think there's all that is there is on that one there's <laughs> tim said topics that we can get into that are short sweet and to the point yep. yeah yeah there's right, well, no go in the opposite direction no i think we're all decided if I could play devil's advocate, though, I'm just kidding. No. I'm never going to be that guy. <laughs> yeah, I would deserve it, please. Honestly, if I say that phrase unironically, it's not me. I've been replaced. Destroy whatever said that. All right, moving along. Yeah, let's Jeez. move along. All right, uh, I got one. Um, so I recently rewatched Oppenheimer for about the fifth time, and uh, I love it. It's still one of my Beautiful. favorite films. <laughs> I'm still unclear. Did they really like blow up a nuke or was it just a, a big bomb for, yes. the, for the filming of the movie? Yes. Um, and it doesn't answer my question. <laughs> what? Uh, it made me start thinking about <laughs> what is that TikTok like with uh, like Christopher like knows is like, yeah, I like to use CGI and he's like pitching it to the the producers and like, yeah, I really want to recreate the bomb. And it, who who was it? Is is someone from? Um, oh, it was uh, uh, Jennifer Lawrence in uh, Hot Ones, and she's saying, uh, "What is she saying?" I'm sorry, what? No, or like I can't remember what it was. Man, I, man, I, can't, I sound dumb, but like it sounds like like oh, please no, or something along those lines. Yeah. Um. Anyways, uh, so it made me start thinking about bombs and nukes and everything, and I saw this interesting article the other day. 
<laughs> Every once in a while, a high rate reading of radioactivity off the coast of Tybee Island, Georgia, sends the U.S. government scrambling to look for a nuclear weapon that's probably hidden 13 to 55 feet below the ocean buried in the sea floor. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> On February 5th, 1958, two Air Force jets collided in midair during a training mission. How does that happen? The B-47 strategic bomber carried a Mark 15 thermonuclear bomb. For over two months, the Air Force and Navy divers searched a 24-square-mile area in the uh, Wausau Sound, a bay of the Atlantic Ocean near Savannah. They never found the nuclear bomb. What do you mean they never found the <laughs> nuclear bomb? What? 40 years later, a retired Air Force officer who remembered newspaper stories about the last lost bomb from his childhood started a search for it. It's, oh my God. It's this legacy this of the random <laughs> man found a nuke. <laughs> it's this legacy of the Cold War. Stephen Schwartz, the author of Atomic Audit, said, This is the kind of hanging out there as a reminder of how untidy things were and how dangerous things were. Um, at the time of the collision, it was common practice for Air Force pilots on training missions to carry bombs on board. <laughs> uh, the purpose of the training mission was to simulate a nuclear attack on the Soviet Union. They practiced flying over different U.S. cities and towns to see whether the electronic beam would reach its target. And so, I, I kept, yeah, I could keep reading the same article, but I'm going to move on to a different one that I found that's a little bit more scary. Uh, this is from BBC. The lost nuclear bombs plural, that no one can find. With an S. <laughs> bombs. The U.S. has lost at least three nuclear bombs that have never been located. My guy, this is a comic book <laughs> villain origin story. This is Fallout. They're still out there to this day. Somebody has them. <laughs> it yeah. <was laughs> probably. They're building their own silo so they can launch them, and they're going to take the world hostage. Yeah. Uh, on January 17th, 1966, around 13 a, uh, excuse me, 10.30 a.m., Spanish shrimp fishermen watched a mishap, in, uh, mishap in while white parcels fell from the sky and slightly glides towards the Alboran Sea. Alboran sea? Uh, it was something hanging beneath it, though he couldn't make out what it was. Then it slipped beneath the waves. At the same time, in a nearby fishing village of Palomores, locals looked up at an identical sky and witnessed a very different scene. Two giant fireballs hurtling towards them. Within seconds, the sleepy whirl, rule uh, idol was shattered. Building shook, shrapnel sliced towards the ground, body parts fell to the earth. A few weeks later, Philip Myers received a message via a teleprinter, a device that could send and receive primitive emails. At the time, he was working as a bomb disposal officer at the Naval Air Facility. Uh, in eastern Sicily. He was told that there was a top-secret emergency in Spain and that he must report there within days. However, the mission was not as covert as the military has hoped. Quote, it was, not a it was not a surprise to be called, says Myers. Even the public knew what was going on. When he attended a dinner party that evening and announced his mysterious trip, it, it, uh, its attended <laughs> confidentiality became something of a joke. Quote, it was kind of embarrassing, says Myers. Quote, it was supposed to be a secret, but my friends were telling me why I was going. <laughs> so, Guys, they gave me a secret <laughs> mission. You mean to go get those nukes? <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. Lower your uh, voice. For weeks, newspapers around the globe had been reporting numerous rumors of terrible accidents. Two U.S. Two US military planes had collided in midair, uh, scattering four uh, B-28 thermonuclear bombs across uh, Palo uh, Palomares. Three were quickly recovered on land, but one had disappeared into the sparkling blue expanse in the southeast. And so it's just... It's just wild because, like, this is just the U.S. and you know Russia and other countries probably have lost some as well. And there's just, oh, I mean, Chernobyl, um, <laughs> the whole plant blew up. Isn't it just wild? Oh. <laughs> it's just wild to think about. Uh, I hope yeah, everyone sleeps I'm sound you, tonight. <laughs> a super villain out there yeah, that's somewhere great. has it. <laughs> the only reason, like, knowing all of the stuff I know about, like, missing nukes and different conspiracy theories about how the world is going to end and villains that have this stuff and criminals that have that stuff. The only reason I sleep at night is because I have tricked my brain into this one thought process. Either everything is going to work out or it will suddenly not be my problem. Yeah. Mm. That's a good point. That's pretty good. Either I live 
or suddenly I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. For real. That's a good one. Now, having a kid has also, like, ruined that, but oh, if I don't True. think about it for too long, that's where I'm at. Yeah. All right, guys. It is Harley's turn. Okay. So, my topic is about... Hold on. Hold that thought. Holding for dear life. I'm, I'm trying to... Okay. Pandemic. And I learned this today, actually. And so when we were kind of like, find topics, I was like, oh, perfect opportunity. Um, pandemic stress physically aged teens' brains, a new study finds. I, I, so this, I've seen this stuff. This is wild. Yeah. This, the studies are relevant and true. Yeah. Um, so this specific one came out in 2022. So obviously, like, right after the world was beginning to open up again and whatever. Um, but it says the brain of adolescents who were assessed after the pandemic shutdowns. Hold on. This is a longer sentence than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> the brains of adolescents who were assessed after the pandemic shutdowns ended. And appeared several years older. I don't know why my brain is. I'm illiterate. Apparently you are uh, the several years audience of that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, several years older than those of teens who were assessed before the pandemic. So until now, such accelerated changes in brain age have only been seen in children experiencing chronic adversity, such as neglect and family dysfunction. Ugh. So these kids, these teens brains were so um, changed or adjusted. I don't know. Um, because of the pandemic shutdown, that their brains look similarly to those of children who have experienced traumatic upbringings, which is crazy. Um, so the study was published on December 1st, 2022 in Biological Psyche Psychiatry. Oh my God. <laughs> Global Open Science. Um, in 2011, Boards of Independence and adults rose by more than 25% compared to previous years. The new findings indicate that the neurological and mental health effects of the pandemic on adolescents may have been even worse. Mm. So this is a quote from Ian Gottlieb, um, and he says, We already know from global research that the pandemic has adversely affected mental health in youth, but we didn't know what, if anything, it was doing physically to their brains. Um, and he is the Marjorie Moon Fair Professor of Psychology in the School of Humanities and Sciences. Um, and he's one of the first authors on this research paper. Um, so he says changes in brain structure occur naturally as we age, of course. Um, during puberty and early teenage years, kids' bodies experience increased growth in both the hippocampus and the amygdala, which are areas of the brain that respectively control access to certain memories and help to modulate emotions. Um, recently, I learned that the way, and similarly to how like toddlers function, the amygdala and like teen brains and like toddler brains are just haywire mm. going crazy because they have like very little, if any at all ability to regulate the emotions that they feel because look, they're so uh, strong. Look, as a parent of a toddler and a teenager at the same time, I can tell you there is no difference between the two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tyler Genuinely. had a bigger vocabulary. All yeah. of their problems were the same. <laughs> exactly. I'm so full of exactly. rage and I don't know why. <laughs> yep. And it was, it was crazy. Um, and then it says, at the same time, tissues in the cortex, an area involved in executive functioning, become thinner. So these are things that naturally occur as you age. So... By comparing MRI scans from a cohort of 163 children that were taken before and during the pandemic, Gottlieb's study showed that this developmental process sped up in adolescents as they experienced the COVID-19 lockdowns. Until now, he says, these sorts of accelerated changes in brain age have appeared only in children, obviously, who have experienced chronic adversity um, or a combination of multiple factors. Mm. Um, including like, you know, like violence or just trauma in general. Um, although 
those experiences are linked to poor mental health outcomes later in life, it's unclear whether the changes in brain structure that the Stanford team observed are linked to changes in mental health. It's also not clear if the changes are permanent. Um, who he's apparently also the director of the SNAP laboratory, which is the Stanford neurodevelopment uh, of affect and psychopathology laboratory at Stanford university. Um, but he says, will their chronologic chronological, <laughs> thank you. Chronological age eventually catch up to their brain age. If their brain remains permanently older than their chronological age, it's unclear what the outcomes will be in the future. Mm. For a 70 or 80 year old, you'd expect some cognitive and memory problems based on changes in the brain. But what does it mean for a 16 year old if their brains are aging prematurely? Mm. It so, sounds a lot like CPTSD. Yeah. What is CPTSD? Uh, complex PTSD. It, it's so PTSD happens when there's like one traumatic event that affects you. Complex mm. PTSD is when it's like a constant thing that is continually happening to you that alters your body so and like your brain effect. over time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So like a lot of child abuse survivors have CPTSD. And honestly, a lot oh. of soldiers have CPTSD, but they don't differentiate in the military. Yeah. Because it's all PTSD. It, yeah. it, it's an umbrella term, PTSD. And there are different types. Some of it is complex. Some of it's childhood. Some of it's, you know, whatever have you. But it sounds like the same effect on the brain. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Then this, like, article starts getting into more of, um, like, the actual study itself. Um. So he explains that the study was not designed to look at the impact of COVID-19 on the on brain structure, like originally, because obviously when he had the original cohort this before the idea of a pandemic ever existed. Yeah. You know? Right. Um, so um, the original goal was to gather a cohort of children and adolescents in the San Francisco Bay area to participate in a long-term study of um, on depression during puberty. Hmm. Um. And so when the pandemic hit, he realized, like, he obviously could not conduct, like, the regular scans on these youth because he could not see them. Yeah. Because the world shut down. Um, and then he says, like, nine months to a year later is when they were able to start picking up on getting, like, doing the scans again. So at this point, the, the study was a year behind schedule. Um, and it says under normal circumstances, it would be possible to statistically correct for the delay while analyzing the study's data, but the, the pandemic was far from a normal event. Duh. Um, he says that, that technique only works if you assume the brains of 16 year olds today are the same as the brains of 16 year olds before the pandemic with respect to cortical thickness and hippo hippocampal and amygdala volume. After looking at data we realized that they're not compared to adolescents assessed before the pandemic adolescents assessed after the pandemic shutdowns not only had more severe internalizing mental health problems but also had reduced cortical thickness larger hippocampal and amygdala volume and more advanced brain age mm. and this was in i think by the time they like got the findings so you could assume this was like a year or so later mm -hmm. Right. It's it's interesting to yeah, and I'm curious to see what the the long-term effects are going to be for even mm -hmm. like like our kids. Like just there was there's a huge period of time where children are not interacting with peers and not interacting yeah. with kids their own age. And so there is going to be ramifications and it's unfortunate, but like it was necessary just with the lockdowns and whatnot. But it is going to I'm very curious to see what this does in because we're going to see this as as time goes on in classrooms and in yeah. and education and it, like mm -hmm. we're going to start seeing trends of something where it's going to be evidence of the pandemic and whatnot like what that did for us as a culture. We're already seeing it in the educational field. It's like yeah. a lot of these kids were 
they had to do like school home and it really didn't work out for them because their parents aren't there or their parents aren't knowledgeable enough to teach the kids what they need to know. They're not mm-hmm. getting that social interaction. So they're falling behind because of that. A lot of the States uh, here in the U S have decided they were going to be a little more lax on standards so as long as you are turning in work, you're getting good grades. It doesn't matter if you understand the topic or not. And now they're yeah. trying to go back to the higher standard of, well, you need to know this to pass. And these kids and don't kids know can't it. read. Yeah. 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 Like I'm seeing a lot of kids like fifth, sixth grade that can't read independently. Yeah. Yep. 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 It also reminded me too, it's different because it's about physical features, but uh, I'm sure you guys know that creator on TikTok. I can't remember his name, but he's the guy who like knows all the um, fast food secrets and uh, he Jordan the Stallion. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, come right here. And he's got his phone. Oh, yeah. 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 He just thought there was like a topic that he had for a few, for a few weeks where he was talking about like how he looks older than what he actually is. Yes. And how like that is also a, I'd like to see if there's any studies about that, but like a Gen Z thing, like I'm, he looks like he's at least in his like younger thirties, but he's like Mm -hmm. 25 and it's just, it's like, oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's gotta be something. Like I understand like some people (laughs) just look older and some people just look younger, but like now that I think about like, yeah, I do know a lot of Gen Zers who look considerably older for their age. Not you, Harley. No, you look amazing. You're incredible. Thank you. I was going to have a mental breakdown. <laughs> we were just talking about this on the last episode, actually. <laughs> it's true. Um, but you, guys, uh, you guys know who Method Man is? Yes. He's, no. He's a rapper. Um, he's, I think, like 50-something. And he was on Jordan the Stallion's TikTok. They look very similar, <laughs> even though Jordan the Stallion mm. is like 20-something. So he's like, yeah, my twin over here, Jordan the Stallion. He's like, I'm not your twin. I could <laughs> oh, be your that son. That is so like, yeah, sad. You know, and they're just, and Method Man like pulls out his phone and he was doing the same thing, wearing the same outfit. He's like, come here. He was like, you can't even tell the difference between us, right? <laughs> he's like, no, they, they know, right? You guys know, right? <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> it's pretty funny. Scary. Scary. Yeah. But yeah. Um, and then... So uh, he goes on to say, like, obviously, since the pandemic was a global phenomenon, there's no one who hasn't experienced it unless obviously you were very young and then you just grow up and you kind of don't similarly to how like my like I was alive for 9-11, but I don't recall uh, any of it. I just remember all of the aftermath. Yeah. Um, but he's saying there's there's no control group. There's no one to. Right. You can't compare it compare to. Anyone, it to. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Not in this so anyway. it's kind of, there's something that was noticed and it's up in the air as to what that holds for the future. Yeah. I'm interested to see, um, because I work obviously in a public library, I have so many kids of different ages, um, but there's the older ones who, you know, struggle with some things like learning or math or whatever, because they, it, it's like, um, do you remember uh, No Child Left Behind? Yeah, unfortunately. Didn't really work out. It, yeah, and it seems like during the pandemic, they just kind of reenacted it and just were like, just mm-hmm. yeah. just go, you know? Everybody gets to pass. Yeah. Um, and it's not like they shouldn't have done that, but I feel like I personally, I don't know how it could have been done differently. Because yeah, we like, were all it, it scrambling. It didn't seem to work, and there probably was something else that could have been done, but I don't know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm interested because, obviously, there's, like, littler ones. So, like, obviously, y'all's kids' age who were not in school. Right. And were just, you know, little kids just being at home, whatever, maybe going to daycare. Um, But they're... I feel like them going into school now, how different is that going to be? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Like I, you were saying, it's the post 9-11 thing. Like everything changed. Yes. But you don't know what it was like before that. Yeah. Yes. I'm very curious to hear. I should we should try to ask some teachers, like some, especially elementary teachers, like what it was like before and after. Like what was your mm-hmm. experience before 
you know, the pandemic and then after, like, what is the differences in, in, you know, the feeling in the room sort of thing? Cause there's gotta be something. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, there's a lot different standards for one. Well, not only that, but like just like in, in a psychological manner, you know, you you're, you seclude yourself for you know an X amount of time, especially at that age where development is you know at its most pivotal. You take yourself away from human interaction when the human body needs that. They it needs mm. a connection with peers around your age. Um, it, it just to me, it, it always did scare me with Arya, especially because it's like, man, I, I don't want her to fail not just educationally, but just with people. Like I want her socially. Yeah. Yeah. I want her to have some social intelligence and how to deal with people. And like, I, that's why I do get upset with certain like uh, upbringings for myself as a, when I was a young Christian, I was raised in for a while in like a private school. And I still remember to this day feeling incredibly embarrassed when I started going to public school because I didn't know things and mm-hmm. I, f- I didn't know how to yeah. interact with other kids my age. I remember that. And fuck you. And <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> and I just, there's social cues that I knew I was missing, but I just couldn't connect the dots. And so, yeah. um, you know, even to this day, like I, I was joking with someone, but like I was telling them, like after I kind of stopped being like this whole pastor Christian thing, like I just started drinking a lot. Like not like excessively where I was like having a problem, but it's just like I felt like I was missing I was like, you know, trying to make up for lost time and like try different mm. things. And like, same thing with like my language. I'm, I know I curse more than I, I probably should and like other things like that. But it's just, it's just funny how secluding yourself can truly do some really incredible things on the brain. And so that was one of my scary things with Aria, especially was just, I don't want it. I didn't want her to suffer. Luckily, I think she's okay. And because we were social enough with her, it's not the worst thing in the world, but, um, and she, I think she went back into like preschool and kindergarten at a good time. So, mm-hmm. but there's, I think a lot of kids who probably weren't as fortunate. Yeah. It's really crazy. It is. So. Yeah. Interesting topic, That's Harley. Thanks. I like that one. I, I'm hoping cause I, it was mentioned to me in this like course that I'm taking for work through, um, this site called like library journal. Um, but it's called like, it's like youth services, um, teen development, um, behavior and like advocacy or something like that. Um, and just like how to better do that in like libraries and like where, like where teens are really in their lives right now because of things like a pandemic and so on and so forth. Mm. So very interesting. Chris, I think we're back to you, man. Uh, I think I think we have time for each of us to have to do one more, if we have it. Ooh, one more? Yeah. Uh, you pick my topic, Tim. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you serious right now? I, I the put, two that you're providing on there, one's going to go extremely long, and but it's good. The other one, I have no idea what the hell that is, other than, like, the obvious. Harley, you pick one. I like both of them. I don't know. Oh my god! All right, let's just do just just do the college stuff. Let's just do it. Okay, so <laughs> I'm sure you guys have noticed there's been a lot of insanity going on with college campuses and protesting for pro Palestine causes, mm-hmm. and they've a lot of college campuses have brought out like police to break up these protests. Some of the kids on campus are like attacking other kids. I, I say kids, mm. they're technically adults. But like the <laughs> pro the pro Israel It ain't fully formed until like twenty five, so <laughs> true. Uh the pro IDF, I should say, not Israel, but pro IDF people are attacking pro Palestinian people. Uh mm-hmm. they're like tearing their tents up and ripping down signs and all kinds of craziness. The police are shooting rubber bullets into crowds of as we just oh determined God. children. But the kids are, like, also fighting back, and it's really cool to see. It's kind of reminiscent of, like, Vietnam-era movies. Yeah. But... Like Kent State. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The LAPD was actually just... Uh, they re- The news report I heard said that they are retreating yeah. from college campuses because they had set up, like, a perimeter of, like, 12 cops, 
and those 12 cops got ambushed by like hundreds of college protesters and they like tore down the perimeter and the cops had to like run away they were scared of the kids i love to see it honestly like i i had a conversation earlier today at work where i could not express my genuine feelings about it Mm -hmm. but i think we are going to be all right as a society as long as the kids get to do what they want to do yeah it is it is wild to see the comparisons between like today and like the Vietnam era, and ultimately it just kind of results or revolves around the same principle that Chris you said to me earlier is just just don't want violence. Like, can we just like not kill people? Like, yeah, like, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter what's <laughs> like. It doesn't matter if you are pro Palestinian government, pro Israeli government, pro whatever government. Like, just don't kill people. <laughs> yeah. It's that hard. They're not protesting against Israel. They're protesting against the IDF killing people. Yeah. For no reason. It's a literal genocide. And it's not just the kids overreacting. Like, people that study genocide are saying it's a genocide. Holocaust survivors are saying it's a genocide. Mm -hmm. It's the same stuff they dealt with. It's just nobody wants to say anything because it's Israel's army this time around. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's well, also if you say um, anything, it's anti Semitic. No, it's pro life, like you guys all claim to be. Uh, it's also a lot of like universities that are funding, um, like Israel and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, some of them are just like, we need a ceasefire, and then other ones are more specific. They're like, no, we need to start defunding this investment that our university is specifically paying money into, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, stop buying from this company stop investing in this particular area stop doing this stop doing that like they have an action plan mm-hmm. these kids yeah. are not stupid and the people that are no and that's what the makes people them that nervous. are coming against them are very ignorant to the actual situation yeah yeah but they have strong feelings about it one way or the other and the kids are like look we're giving you all of our reasons and like, well you can't be anti-israel that's anti-semitic okay but i'm not I just don't want to be invested in a company that's paying money to kill people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it shouldn't be that difficult. It's the same mindset of like, you know, when people say like, I'm not proud of being an American. Like sometimes it's not anything to do with my neighbor next to me it has everything to do with the people in power. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be about you. It's kind of like what that whole uh, conversation we we're having earlier about men. Like, it, if it's not about you, then it's not about you. Like, the, mm-hmm. if, if you're feeling so defensive about us being against people who are violent, then that should be a really big indicator that maybe there's something that you need to evaluate about yourself. Um, it, it just it is baffling to me. I, I, I did want to bring up a news um, thing I saw from So Informed. They, uh, they said a news report found that 99% of pro-Palestine uh, protests at U.S. colleges have been peaceful. Uh, despite remarks from Biden characterizing these demonstrations as, quote, violent. Just like the BLM protests. As, uh, yeah. A, yeah, a report released today by the Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project, that's a mouthful, ACLED, a nonprofit specializ- specializing in crisis mapping, said that the vast majority of student led protests against the genocide in Gaza have remained vastly peaceful. From the report to the overwhelming majority, 99% of demonstrations on college campuses have been peaceful. Quote, police intervention against student demonstrations more than quadrupled in April. Police have intervened against pro-Palestine demonstrations more than four times as often as pro-Israel demonstrations. And it's just, it, it, it just, it's, it's sometimes baffling to me to see how easy it is for history to repeat itself. Like, the Vietnam War was back in the late 60s, early 70s, for America anyways. And it's just, yeah, sure, we, we, there were people that did get on the news that were yelling and, you know, being horrible at soldiers returning from war. My grandfather was one of those soldiers coming back, and he received a lot of hate. But it is, But there is also a flip side to this where it's like a lot of those people were just going against the violence. Like, no, we don't have to be over there. There is no reason for us to be in their war over there and for us to be bombing innocent people, literally firebombing complete farms and and towns 
and destroying so many innocent lives. Um, it's just remarkable to see how it just it's easy for history to repeat itself. Like, yeah, like people mm-hmm. are seeing this as a as, like Chris said, like as anti-Semitism or or as like, well, you're not really for you know the U.S. or for Israel or whatever, or like this is not American or like. I literally saw someone. <laughs> they were they were they were uh, someone was talking to a journalist on like CNN or something, and they were talking about like, yeah, I just hate how like some of these protests have turned into like crazy demonstrations and like destruction of property. And and the news reporter was like, oh, so you think that breaking into places and destroying things is bad? And she he goes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so you would agree then that the insurrectionist on January twentieth was or was January it January fifth? Uh, was was bad. It's just like this. Like the like, cognitive dissonance is just—it's mind-boggling. It absolutely is. So mm-hmm. anyway, yeah, that's that's what I got to say about that. Yeah, and it's also like, um, well, of course, all of these are going to be peaceful because the students leading them are smart enough to know better. Yeah, they know like doing violence isn't gonna solve anything yeah it's not gonna get results and it's just gonna make them look bad right it's it's almost like and that's what's so funny to me in all this too is like there's there's a very clear image like perception of things like it doesn't matter how much you think you're on the side you at least have to understand the perception of things like i i can't imagine myself even as a christian being on the side of people who are just absolutely just destroying a country, like destroying a people, yeah. destroying homes, not, destroying not civilization. Just the country, it's those things. They're coming after the people, the right. civilians. Like you like can see the physical destruction. Obviously it, nobody is condoning what Hamas did in Israel. But Hamas doesn't speak for the Palestinian people. Yeah. However, the IDF has started attacking the Palestinian people and they just give any kind of reason. Well, we thought Hamas might be in that hospital. It doesn't matter. You blew up a fucking hospital. Right. Like they will, they walk in and they will spray children with bullets and then say, oh, well, Hamas was using human shields. Yeah. I've never Mm -hmm. once seen a situation where somebody has a human shield and the solution is to kill the human shield. Yeah, there, there's there's a quote from Oppenheimer where uh, they're trying to discuss whether it's worth creating an H-bomb, the hydrogen bomb. And I can't remember his name, but he was basically saying, what's the difference here of us creating this H-bomb? What's the difference between a, if we use a bomb that creates a thousand dollar or a, 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 a thousand foot wave versus a, a hundred foot wave? Either way, it's going to destroy and kill a bunch of people. Like either way you look at this, them going and attacking a hospital is going to hurt a lot of people. Like, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how you look at it, whether you're using the excuse that someone was there or not, you're attacking a hospital. You're, you're, you're going into a civilian population and throwing rockets in there. I'm sorry, but like, I can't find a reasonable response to that. Yeah. That's like if somebody throws a rock at your house, so you step outside with a shotgun and shoot them in the face. Yeah. Like that, that's not appropriate response. That's what's happening right now. It's not appropriate response, and that's what's being protested. Nobody's protesting Jews. They're protesting the IDF killing innocent people. And it, mm-hmm. it's such a crazy time that we live in to be able to see that, too, because everybody's got social media. Like, I don't know what they think yeah. they're doing, but these people aren't just saying, oh, this is happening to us, and we're like, yeah, show us the proof. They have the proof. They're live streaming their deaths. Sometimes people are posting that stuff on Facebook and on Twitter and on TikTok because that's all they can do. They know they're going to die. Yeah. And they just want somebody to bear witness to it and try to stop someone else from dying. I'm not upset about this stuff because I'm anti-Semitic. I'm upset about this stuff because I've watched people die Mm -hmm. with Mm -hmm. my own eyes. Like, TikTok is pretty good about censoring stuff like that. They can't stop all of it, but they're pretty good about it. Twitter, or X, whatever you want to call it now, does not give a single flying fuck. They will put anything on there. It's 
it's it's heartbreaking and gut wrenching to see, but I've seen adults and children alike over there killed. I have watched their lives end, and I for one can congratulate those college students that are physically fighting police officers trying to break up the protest. If I could, I would be there. The sticker with the water thing. Bonk, 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 bonk. Have you seen those? I have no idea no. what you're talking about. It was this, I forget which university it was, um, but there were some cops that were trying to get into the a certain building and the college kids were like shoving them out of there. Yeah. Somebody had one of those huge refillable um, water jugs that you can put in a... Um, like those water fountains, you know, like where you go psh, mm-hmm. and you fill oh, up your water yeah. cup with like or the cold, the cold. Yeah. What was cold? Water I, jug. I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. I don't know what you're. Somebody I had an empty one of those. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm bonking <laughs> the shit out of the cop. Yeah. And they eventually they literally backed down and just left because they couldn't get in the building. And I was like, that's beautiful. <laughs> One of my favorite things that I laugh at all the time but is becoming so much more important to me is a Brandon Lee Mulligan quote from uh, D20. He, he's a D&D guy. I've never been a D&D guy, but I'm, I might give it a shot after watching some of this stuff. But he said in one of their campaigns, there were a bunch of people like going up against a king, an evil king or whatever have you, and he was playing a non a non playable character that was reacting to the party. And he said, listen, I don't know what you kids are up to, but I do know one thing. Laws are threats enacted by the powerful socio, uh, sorry, the most powerful group in a socioeconomic situation. Uh, they're essentially just promises of violence enacted and the police are an occupying force. Like that is, it, it was a throwaway yeah. line from just the game they were playing, but it's so true. And it's been mm-hmm. quoted so many times. Yeah, I just imagine like the game stopping and then all of them like looking at him and being like, that's exactly that what happened. Bad. And then he <laughs> continued. He's like, yeah, you guys want to make some bacon? And then he pulls down a mask and pulls out a lit Molotov cocktail. <laughs> Oh, so my only concern is, um, and I mean, at the end of the day, like there are bigger things going on, but I do worry for the students. Yeah. I don't know. Like those who are seniors and, and like, really it's like finals week time for colleges right now. Like, and they're getting arrested. Like they can't take yeah. their tests. And like. Oh. Their own safety. I know a lot of them are wearing masks and stuff to like protect their identity, which is pretty baller. Um, but yeah, I want to say it was I just Florida. Where we... The uh, give me one second. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, DeSantis on college protests. I think it was Florida, uh, but he said if anybody is on campus arrested for that stuff then they will not get to graduate they'll be arrested they'll be kicked out of their colleges like even with the first amendment being what it is he does not care yeah yeah uh pro palestinian so was student Abbott. protesters Abbott was should doing be expelled that for, for their universities and those who are international will be deported yeah abbott was saying that about ut yep but yeah, Can I just worry because like, like caring about if, life and getting deported for it. Jeez. Yeah. And like if that is to be like something that can legally be enacted, which I. They're the ones that make the laws. Of course it can. Yeah. Um, Like imagine you how can you even get your transcript and transfer to another school? Like yeah. will another school accept you? Another school probably wouldn't take you if you're expelled. Exactly. So I'm like. Also, like, look at this, look at it this way, like, these foreign students that are here, they could just be walking across the quad, not involved at all, Mm -hmm. arrested, Uh accused, and deported before they even know what's going on. Yeah. Like, you could just say, oh, I saw this guy at this campus protest, arrest him, expel him, 
Like, I don't like this student. So that's a quick way to get rid of that student. Especially like brown and black students. Especially if they're from there. Palestinians come to America to go to school, just like every other place. Like, yeah. Yeah. They send students all across the world to go to school. Could you imagine being an actual Palestinian student just deported back to, Mm. well, not back to where you're from because it's probably gone, but sent to Rafa? People are trying to get out and you're being deported to there. No. This country has lost its heart and in doing so has lost its mind. Real. No. Scary times we live in. Scary, scary. So that's not all I have to say about that, but I'm sure that's all we have time for. All right, guys. Uh, okay, we got two more little segments here, one for me and one for Harley, and I think they're more lighthearted. Uh, yeah, let's, so... let's lighten that up a bit. <laughs> sure did. Uh, okay, um, I'm just going to dive right into this one. A woman who turned up for a hospital scan only, be, only to be told that she had already died has demanded an explanation. <laughs> no, is this one of those, like, stolen Social Security stories? Those are scary. No. Uh, uh, Brittlington Hospital staff told Susan Johnson, according to their records, she had been dead for four months. The muddle meant the 62-year-old's career's allowance for looking after disabled husband Bob briefly stopped. NEH England said it was aware of an issue involving an incorrect civil death registration letter uh, rectified by a patient's GP. Ms. Johnson from Scarborough attended her hospital appointment on March 2023. The mother of two said, I gave them my letter, and their first words were, oh, you're dead. (laughs) My God. I said, pardon? Was that a threat? (laughs) (laughs) I was in shock. Then they put something on the computer so I could have the scan, and then they just said, bye, and that's it. Ms. Johnson said uh, the experience left her shaking like a leaf. (laughs) Uh, husband. They didn't elaborate. That's the crazy part. Oh, the fact that they were like, "You're Sorry. dead." It's Scan. Just, it just reminds Bye. me. <laughs> Bye. It's like that pothole commercial. Bye. So, okay, bye. It's like that that episode of SpongeBob with uh, what's this? I can't remember the superhero's name, but he's got the he's got Patrick's wallet. And it's like, is this you? Yeah. He was a villain, first of all, <laughs> and his name was Mama 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 Man Ray. He took so long to get there. God. Yeah, he was like, worth it. Is this your ID? And he was yes. like, yep. yep. And he was like, and, I found it and in it's this in this wallet. He was like, yep. that tracks. And this wallet <laughs> fell out of your pocket. Seems logical. Yeah. So, this is your wallet. It's not my wallet. Not my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Husband Bob was angry when he heard that what had happened and took Miss Johnson for a coffee to calm her nerves, she said. The I re- thought Bob was dead. <laughs> no, they're no, both no, alive. No, no, she was his caretaker. Oh, okay. Wait, what? No. Yeah. She, oh, yeah, yeah, She yeah, was yeah. getting an allowance for being his caretaker, probably because he's wounded military. Same thing Colleen does uh, with Terry. Oh, I, I thought you said it stopped because he died. Or it, it just randomly she died. <laughs> Apparently. Oh. Disabled husbands, Bob briefly stopped. Just, he's, a, yeah. he's disabled. They're not going to pay somebody to be a caretaker if that caretaker is dead. Right, but like, I thought, I didn't realize they stopped paying because they thought she was dead. I thought they stopped paying because he died and no longer needed a caretaker. So they were like, well, she must be dead too. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's even worse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so husband Bob was angry. Um the retired housekeeper contacted oh, her GP and was told that the mistake had been fixed. However, when she contacted the Department for Work and Pensions, the uh, bemused call handler told her, on the computer, you're dead. <laughs> she said, I said, I'm not. I'm still talking to you. <laughs> Quote, I shut down completely. I didn't talk or anything. I was in my own little bubble, she recalled. This is reminding me of Monty Python. And then they start thinking she's dead. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. Yes, you are. <laughs> I feel better. 
no, you're going to die soon anyway. I might go for a walk. <laughs> she said, uh, all, uh, although her benefits have now been reinstated, Miss Johnson is still unclear as to how the mistake happened and who was responsible. She said, quote, it was very hard. There was no one to talk to. In a statement, well, you can't you're talk dead. to people when you're dead. <laughs> like, what do you want? <laughs> Make friends Can in the Can you afterlife. imagine? Like, when, when she said, she was like, and then I just I just stopped talking when I was on the phone. And the person's like, ma'am? Ma'am? Oh, my God, she is dead. I told her she was dead. <laughs> the ghost story that that operator had to have had at the moment, like, I have been talking to a ghost this whole time. <laughs> uh, Miss Keisha. Miss Keisha. Oh, my fucking God, she did. <laughs> oh, man, I miss mine. Uh, the DWP confirmed benefits were briefly suspended following incorrect notification of Miss Johnson's death, but they had been swiftly reinstated. It remains unclear who was responsible for sending the instruction to remove Miss Johnson from her GP's records and who informed DWP. I imagine it was probably the Grinch. <laughs> like that scene where he's just throwing mail into random people's mailboxes. <laughs> jury duty, jury duty, pink slip, jury duty. Like, I imagine that's... He just walked by and was like, this lady is now dead. <laughs> it's the Grim Reaper. <laughs> the Grinch Reaper. Oh, that uh, sounds terrifying. Mm, sure does. All right, last bit. Miss <laughs> Johnson, who is now concentrating on her hobbies of gardening and knitting, wants to move on with her life, but still wants <laughs> answers. Quote, she can't move on with I her need- life. <laughs> I need to find out why it (laughs) happened, how and by whom she said. And that person, whoever has pressed a button, shouldn't be working wherever they are. (laughs) Wow. I also remember that scene from Brother Bear. This summer, I lost my poor husband, Edgar. (laughs) Quit telling everyone I'm dead. Sometimes I can still hear his voice. Plot was it was just her husband. <laughs> he did it so he could have that story. <laughs> he says that now every time he goes to the store with her, mind you. Yeah. <laughs> She's like standing like, right still there. I'm not voice. dead. <laughs> Crazy. Yep. Good times. All right, Harley, you got the last story for us today. Yay. Okay. Chicago's rat hole is removed after the city determined the sidewalk was damaged. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> so it was We're kind not of trending just gonna on say things like rat hole. <laughs> rat hole. Yeah, My I favorite see that part, everywhere. So I got this off of NPR's website, and the way it starts is it says, you know how it always says like the location first. Uh-huh. So it says Chicago, the rat, rat hole, hole is gone. <laughs> rat <hole's> gone. <laughs> <laughs> is this the start to a Star Wars movie? <laughs> Just see it in the so, yellow scroll. Yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Chicago's <laughs> rat hole. The Empire Strikes Back in the rat hole. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, there is this. Let me see if I can just show it to you real quick. Um, Please do. In Chicago, in this neighborhood, there was a piece of sidewalk with a hole in it in the shape of a rat. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. That is some straight up Looney Tune shit. Yeah. Someone and threw a rat through a or in fired a rat a through a roller. cannonball and went through. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the steam. I don't I have no words. Um so it's like it's like it's like Jerry and uh uh Tom and Jerry Tom and Jerry and like he just totally ran into a, yeah. <laughs> the sidewalk. Yep. Boof. <laughs> so it blew up on social media in January of this year. Um and obviously as social media starts to work its magic and it goes viral and people start visiting this rat hole in this neighborhood in Chicago. It was removed From the ground, Wednesday, April 24th. Boo. Chicago city officials were like, they determined that the section of the sidewalk that was bearing this imprint of this rat um, was damaged and needed to be replaced. Boo. Yeah. People like Um, that shouldn't be in charge. Yeah. Let the people have some Um, fun. Those are like homeowners association people in charge. 
Did it hurt anyone? Well, it's like this was like a more affluent neighborhood in Chicago because it exactly. says, um, exactly. of course it was. It was yeah. um, Chicago's north side neighborhood of Roscoe Village. So, but apparently this has been there for years. Yeah, but now but that it's it getting just, attention, they decide, oh, yeah. we need to look good. But they don't understand what makes people look good. It's character. Yeah. And nothing says character like the like a rat of a rat. <laughs> but the problem was the neighbors were complaining because obviously the intent, the attention brought people. And so oh. people were visiting at all hours of the day. They were leaving like gifts for the rat hole. They were leaving <laughs> pennies for the rat hole. Um, and then it also says, that plus, many in the neighborhood argue that the imprint was actually caused by a squirrel. So it's not even a rat hole. Squirrel hole. Blood for the blood god. Squirrel for the squirrel hole. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, Erica Sh- I have a cat hair on my lip. I hate that. Erica Schroeder, a spokesperson for the Chicago Department of Transportation, wild, first of all, yeah. um, said the square of sidewalk containing the famous Chicago rat hole is now in temporary storage. They better so they put still it got in. it. It belongs in a museum. <laughs> <laughs> um, she said that where the slab of sidewalk, which has an impression resembling the outline of a rat, claws, tail, and all, um, expected to be a collaborative decision between the departments and the mayor's office. Mm. What will be done with this slab of sidewalk? This is wild. With oh. a rat imprint. What a story. I've like, mm-hmm. said it before what? and I'll say it again. It belongs in a museum. Well, this yeah. is Americana. I don't care who you are. This is like a piece of like treasure for, for American culture. Oh, yeah. Like, we don't have 100%. anything else going on. Exactly. Let us have the rat hole. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man. Um, the, the Fed just came out today and said they were not going to decrease interest rates like they were expecting to for housing. So the housing crisis is still going on. Mm -hmm. There's no way any of us is affording a house anytime soon. Um, We are in the middle of like three separate wars, and any one of them could escalate into a nuclear world war. Thanks, Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. We have an election coming up with the oldest presidents ever to run for office, and they're beating the previous record that was set by them. (laughs) One of them is a felon. The yeah, other dude. one is that feels just illegal. really, really old and probably Decrepit. has committed some felonies, but we'll see. No, uh, keep her. Like, we, we have nothing good going on for us. Give us, us the rat hole, man. Give us, rat Give us the rat hole. Let us keep yeah, it. Yeah. This is why really we can't it. have nice things. They removed the rat hole. Yeah. I Apparently, say, the sidewalk was also, like, really uneven, and it was, like, not safe for, like, you know, anyone to walk on, but let alone like handicap. Back in my well, day, my car sidewalks had you know some some hills on them, man. Yeah, uh, when I was growing up, we didn't even yeah. have sidewalks. Truly, that's true. But yeah, I, I'm. I wish we could know how the rat hole came to be, but you can like see on the image. You can Just, see like it looked like a rat. Psh, <laughs> yeah, like the like hand like, marks. Literally, that was in my head. Like literally, cartoon. She put a rat in her cannon and shot it at it. I'm, a, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. What probably happened is while they were laying the cement, stop it. The rat yeah. or the squirrel got stuck. Yeah, yeah. And then it That's eventually died and rotted away, and, and just kind of rotted. Still there. Yep. Nature. Yep. That's exactly what I was just thinking. That's probably what happened. And they were like, but well. But the cannon idea is way more fun. So much more. That's pretty expensive. <laughs> we're just going to Look, I bought, this yeah. po- I bought this potato launcher, but I'm all out of potatoes. <laughs> just put a rat in the grab that, Grab that rat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the rats in, like, big cities is kind of like an issue. They, they are I, large. They get yeah. on subways. They pay for subway <laughs> they tickets. pay for it. Have you guys seen They Ninja contribute Turtles? to society. Oh, pay for Have you seen Ninja Turtles? <laughs> There is a giant rat man living in the sewers right now <laughs> teaching turtles martial arts. Like, come on. No, 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 no. Rat right. man. <laughs> All right. On okay. that note, uh, I think we are transitioning out of these wild, funky stories. Fine. <laughs> Uh, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about the most important holiday of the year, May the 4th.
All right, Force Dwellers, we are back. Uh, what a what a what a what an episode we got going on here for us. I'm uh, having early. fun. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun. Yeah. Do the cantina. Come on. I'm actually <laughs> one of the aliens. <laughs> I'm literally <laughs> in the cantina band. <laughs> Yeah. You know, on the original Star Wars Battlefront, how um you yes. could play on Tatooine, oh, Tatooine, yeah. Tatooine. 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 Mm-hmm. Sorry, it's either Dantooine or Sorry. Tatooine. Which one do you mean? It's Tatooine. Tatooine. The Thank you. Sand planet. Yep. Tatooine um, is also a sand planet, but go on. Oh, I'm doing good. But it's where the cantina is. Twin Suns. Tatooine. Yeah. And Mos Eisley would be more specific. Oh, good heavens! <laughs> the cantina. Anyways. Mos You'll never find more wretched hive of scum and villainy. But you could play, like, you could switch it to where everybody would play as, like, a Jedi or, like, a... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the dark side. The Sith. Uh, Yes. Brain is not working. You're doing just Um, fine, Harley. You're you're getting it, girl. Thank you. Um, I used to play that all the time. Oh, yeah. And then I would go in the cantina and just, like, dance and, like, hide from people. (laughs) Love it. My favorite. I didn't want to get that game out. I have it on the Xbox play that you know i've always thought that they should make a crossover of star wars and the south park 64 game it was a a third person shooter game where they would run around with like uh laser tag guns or dart guns but you would actually die playing this game there was a there was one gun that when you got shot with it your character would sing and dance and then immediately die after the dance. But you had to watch this whole animation of your own character <laughs> dancing and singing. And I still, to this day, remember the song. Ooh, when I get that feeling, I gotta sing. When I get that feeling, when I get that feeling, I gotta sing. <laughs> and then you would die. <laughs> I think they should do that with the Cantina song. Wow. God, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, we're talking about May the 4th. We're talking about May the, the beloved holiday. The, Be with you. When this episode airs, the holiday will be passed, but it's still ahead of us. Uh, so we are we are celebrating uh, preemptively for it. Yeah, and postemptively. That's correct. Um, and so if you, if you're listening to this, you're listening to it after the effect. So we hope you had a wonderful fourth. Um, mm-hmm. but we decided to give it a little time, give it a little respect, you know, uh, give it a little attention that it deserves and talk about some of our favorite Star Wars things because why not? So let's, let's talk about it. what's our favorite Star Wars. What's our favorite movie? That is a really tough one for me. That is really hard. If we're just talking the main nine movies. Mm-hmm. I still couldn't tell you, man. Um, I need to I, look up all of their names. I want to say Empire because that's the one I grew up on. That one's got the most nostalgia. Are we talking favorite or best? Favorite. Favorite. Because I think the best would, is arguably Empire. But I think I, 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 sw- I could switch from any week between New Hope and Empire as a favorite. For me, it's Return of the Jedi and Empire. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I, I think like... Quality wise, it's Empire then Return of the Jedi, but my favorite is Return of the Jedi then Empire. Hmm. Like I can say, my favorite is not the best. Yeah, yeah. I just really love the Forest Moon of Endor. Ah, uh, yes, that's true. My favorite is probably Revenge of the Sith. Hey, that's all right. number that's three a good for one. me. Yeah. That's number three. That's a good one. That one's a good one. Very I feel like solid. it really like it encapsulates all that Star Wars yes. is. Mm-hmm. I saw this TikTok of like ten year olds watching uh Revenge of the Sith, uh watching Anakin turn into Darth Vader, just what the fuck? <laughs> just Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That that's was never I was where that I thought that was <laughs> Yeah. That's never where I thought the prequels were going. Yeah. But you know, it tracks. I mean I knew I knew from when he episode went and one. murdered all the kids. 
I knew from Crazy. episode one when they're like, "This is Anakin." I was like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna kill everybody." <laughs> I do remember, and like this is like just a fun, like one of my favorite childhood memories was my dad. We went to, um, we went to. Wait, I might be remembering this wrong. When did tell it anyway? When did Phantom Menace come out? We were kids. I know we were kids, but what time of year did it? Ninety nine. What time of year? Oh, Where's don't ask me because I saw it at the movie theater on Fort Hood, which was a dollar movie theater, which meant that it. When I saw it, it was long after it premiered. It was like months. It came later. out in ninety nine. May. Okay, so different memory, but I do remember my dad taking me to go see this movie. Um, and I remember it being like my first in theater Star Wars experience. And that is so mm-hmm. special. Oh, because it really like, is. Like, Especially since it was a brand new Exactly, trilogy. exactly. Like, I remember watching the originals like on VHS and everything. Yeah, I have both the original yeah. black case uh, yep. reset and the, the gold. gold case. Yeah. I have both of them yeah, right yeah. now. Oh, yeah. And so I remember watching like with the remastered and everything and like, yeah, yeah. But I remember going to see this stuff and then just being absolutely just, it, it totally sucked me in. Like, that was the experience, watching Phantom Menace. And even as dorky as it was mm-hmm. back then, falling in love with it. Because Darth Maul yes. had a dual lightsaber. And it, this kid was taking on the the evil, uh, uh, um, oh God, I can't even, it's not the Empire, but the trade union and and just it just the galactic trade federation yeah and it just it, it yeah. is absolutely just one of my favorite things about my childhood was watching star wars in theater when i was a kid they had um on base they brought a jedi training academy and it was like the prequel to all the video games of the jedi training academy thing oh like all the yeah. vr stuff where we went into this giant tent that they had set up in the parking lot of the PX. And they <laughs> gave everybody there a little plastic lightsaber. <laughs> and they would, like, shoot dart guns at you. And you would try to deflect the darts. And then they had, like, a laser tag <gasps> type thing set up. So you would try to deflect the blaster. <laughs> and then they had uh, kind of like uh, the Star Wars thing at Disney where they had a Sith Lord at the end. And you would mm, fight the Sith Lord. Yeah. And I went He's through just that some soldier. and became a Jedi <laughs> that day. Oh, yeah. And Congrats, when I man. was done, I quoted Star Wars to the Star Wars people. Because these are like touring people. It wasn't just like some rando on base oh. that got hired. Like they were touring. Yeah. So I quoted Star Wars to them. And they're like, you are now a Jedi Knight in the Jedi Order. And I was like, I am a Jedi as my father, father before me. me. <laughs> and my dad was so proud. <laughs> Like, I could see he was, like, beaming ear to ear. He was so stoked. I'm telling you, if my daughter Nerd. ever says that kind of shit to me, like, I'm going to ball. <laughs> oh, 100%. 100%. I'm going to. Uh, I'm, I'm seriously, like, I'm really hoping, because I know they're about to make a new Star Wars film with Rey and everything, and I'm really excited. Oh, because, really? Yeah. I, I love Rey as a character. Yeah, same. I'm so pumped I, for that. And so Arya, how I think you be, feel. Go ahead. Oh. I was going to say how you feel about when you saw like the Phantom Menace, like for the first time, like that's how I feel about when um, the force awakens came out. Cause that was my first opportunity to yeah. see a star Wars yeah. film in theaters. Yeah. Cause obviously everything was, I was very young when the prequels came out. Mm-hmm. And then obviously the original trilogy, I was not even thought of, but yeah. Well, yeah. And that, that's why I'm really excited about this new one because it, I love, don't get me wrong, I love like Rogue One and, you know, this Andor series and everything, but it's definitely more adultish. But I feel like mm. with this Ray series, it really will still be okay for kids. And so for yeah. Arya, by the time this one comes out, I think she'll be like maybe eight or nine. And it's perfect. Mm. Especially timing. having a female oh, lead. God, a female so Jedi excited. lead. Like, I get to take my daughter to that. Yeah. Oh, like, we should I'm, all go for, together. I know for my dad, he watched Star Wars when he was Oh, younger. daddy-daughter date. He loved it. Yeah. He loves Star Wars from the beginning, so he got to show me Star Wars as a kid, and I know that, like, it melted his heart. And I get to experience that with my daughter, assuming the world doesn't end. I get to experience that with my daughter, knowing that the way I related to Anakin, the way my dad related to Luke, she gets to relate to Rey. Mm -hmm. And I'm so pumped for that. Yeah, I'm about to start crying right now just thinking (laughs) about it. Yeah, That's enough to make a grown man cry. 
but not, not this grown man. man. <laughs> Get back in, in there, there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to move on. Uh, favorite character? I think Ahsoka. I think Chris and I have talked about this before. Ahsoka. Uh, I'm all we want. Ahsoka Tano. Obi Wan's uh, Obi Wan is really two. good, but Ahsoka's a close second for me. Yep. Tim and I are like very close. Just. Mm -hmm. I love Princess Leia. Hey, nothing Leia, wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with loving her. Oh Leia. God, she was Leia. one of my first loves. Yep. If we're being honest. Yep. Pretty baller. I mean, Return of Carrie the Jedi Fisher, is my man. favorite. Mm -hmm. All right, and Star Wars wishes. Like, what do we want to see? What are some wishes and desires? Uh, along with a Ray movie, they are also has been confirmed that they are making a Mandalorian movie, which will be basically kind of like following the end of season three. Which I think, Chris, you've seen. Oh yeah, uh, Harley, you have not. Um, seen what? Have you seen all of Mandalorian? No. Yeah. Uh, Watch it. You should. It's fantastic. <laughs> Sorry. You do have to watch Book of Boba Fett as well. Sort of. But I mean, you can like fast forward through most of it. <laughs> just get to the ending when Mandalorian comes back. Yeah. Okay. It's basically Should terms I... of just like Mandalorian 2.5. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I am excited about that. I think my wish is, I this is a hot take. And I realize that this is controversial by saying this. But I am okay with them recasting Luke Skywalker with a actor today, so that way they could do a series about Luke Skywalker after the events of Return of the Jedi. Sebastian because Stan. I, that's my first go-to. Sebastian, what's his name? Yeah, I, like, and I here, don't know. he's here, got two first names. It is Sebastian Stan. Um, and don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the Mandalorian, and they after the re-release, they did really good with the CGI and the the AI. But I just I, I want a series. And they I, could do it the way that they did Captain America with Skinny Steve. But they would just use Sebastian Stan as the base and then CGI over him. Honestly, it wouldn't. I mean, it wouldn't take much. It wouldn't take much. Oh my god! It was just in my head how they could do it. Have, you, have you seen his face, like Sebastian, like, like with with Luke's hair and everything? Have you seen no. that online? I got I got to find it for you. But he, it's he looks like a young Mark Hamill. He looks like a very young Mark Hamill. I mean, that's like the same thing with um Solo. Like oh. Just they could have done solo CGI better. I, they didn't do solo CGI. They I, just used no, no, no. I'm not saying actor. CGI. I'm saying like a actor. Yeah, who I like looks like. Yeah, I like the actor, but like he didn't look very much like. At least not in my opinion. Like look like a Han Solo. The the difference is like we saw Luke from 17 until roughly. 20, yeah, he was pretty 20 something, and then in Mandalorian they use CGI to show him again. And now we see the the. So Force we need somebody Awakens who's slightly old, older. Yeah, we we need like an aged version, which Sebastian Stan mm. could do it absolutely. Oh, the one on the right is Sebastian Stan. Ah, yes, I can tell. Like he could be a little aged version of Luke, which I would be perfectly fine with. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty baller. Um, Love that. I think my wish, though, for Star my Wars, wish. I would oh, love yeah. to see. Cal Kestis and Ooh. Ahsoka Tano together. Yes. With Luke rebuilding oh. the Jedi Order. Oh. Preach. I think that would be so <laughs> cool. And they wouldn't have to do any CGI for Cal Kestis. Uh -uh. They just need to hire Cameron they, Monaghan. Because it's him. Yeah. It, that's literally him. They based it off of him. He did all the, the voice acting and the body mm -hmm. doubling and all that. They wait, it depending on wait, when would that happen? She was she would have been an adult then at that point, right? Ahsoka? Yeah, she's definitely an adult. Right? It, she, it would be uh, Rosario Dawson. Would it be? It, we, mm. Yeah, because Luke is starting the Jedi Order with Grogu. Oh, you're talking about then. Okay, you're not talking about like after the events of um, um, number three. You're talking no, about no, like no, after no. six. No, no, no. I mean like between six and seven. Oh, okay. Okay. Ray? okay. Gotcha. Before Ray. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I want to see that. There. And I don't want that to be the full focus of the movie. I just want to see it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. And then I want to see Ray and Ahsoka meet up and be best friends. Yes. She's like, I'm Ray <sighs> Skywalker. And Ahsoka's like, uh, no, you're not. But I'm going to support you anyway because women love women. She'd be like, oh, I yeah. know the Skywalkers. You are not one. But. I don't I, think she would ever do that. I'm going to say nothing about it. You want to be a Skywalker? Let's be Skywalkers. Yeah, I think she would probably. 
be like, rock on player. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think I have any wishes. I don't know. Maybe. Um, and I don't know if they already have come out with it, but, um, more Lego star Wars. Mm, like shows or, you or you talking about the games, the games, uh, they came out like the whole saga one, which you whole saga actually got me for my birthday. Uh, yeah. Like with Ray. Yeah. <gasps> well, my wish is fulfilled. <laughs> so I have the Lego I Star Wars Saga game, but... I didn't realize they had gone that far. The biggest bummer of that for me is that it's on Switch. I love <gasps> the fact that you got it for me on Switch, it's but on Switch. my Switch controller Beautiful. broke. Oh, okay. So I can't play it. That's the only Get downside. I was about to say, dude. <laughs> No, no, no. I appreciate everything you do for me at all times. I was going to say, I would love that on the Switch. That'd be baller. Yeah. So, But my right my right uh, controller has stick drift. No. All of my right controllers. I have like four different sets of controllers. Take it and easy on your all of them Stop being drift. so aggressive with your controllers. I'm not. It's just a, it's a problem that they have. You have created the problem. You are the problem. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't have any wishes. All right. Well, I just want more new Star Wars. Well, you should get the game then. You should get that. It's, it's a lot of fun to play. And it's like, it's, it, it takes a while to complete and everything. It looks so. like it's a lot of fun to I play. I loved playing <laughs> I love I love Lego like, I games. I wish I could mm-hmm. play it. I, I have played the older Lego Star Wars, though, and they are so much fun. Yeah. Oh, they are. I love them. Yeah. Love them. Love them. That's it. All right, y'all. Well, I think it's a good time to wrap up this episode. Uh, May the 4th be with you, uh, wherever you were, wherever you are. And also with you. Uh, I'm, for, for, I'm, and May the Sith, whatever. Revenge, May the Revenge fifth, of the Sith. Revenge of the Fifth. fifth Sith. Yes. God bless America. I need to go to bed. <laughs> you all right, Harley? No, I'm having a strong. <laughs> a strong. <laughs> all right. Uh, two sentence final thoughts, anyone? Um, we got through that decently fast. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you thought I was going to take way longer than I did. I, mean, I think we could have limited the topics. We could have. We could have. <laughs> I had fun. With Better luck next time. We'll see how the edit goes. I've also been progressively drinking more and more throughout the episode. Oh, I've noticed. So I yeah, thought, did y'all see that glass of wine? I, I, sure I went gone. Gone. It's, gone. So, it, the problem. The problem is though that I mix them. I had beer. I had two beers. Two beers. And a glass of wine. Sure did, buddy. And when I'm done with this, I'm going to go get more wine. And if there's not more wine, I'll probably switch to whiskey. (gasps) Oh, my God. Uh, It's definitely supposed to be the other way around, so I'll probably be sick in the morning. We're millennials. For sure, dude. (laughs) But we're millennials. We go to work sick anyway. (laughs) I'm a millennial. Yeah. Of Couldn't course be I'm me. gonna drink, get really sick, <laughs> so and go to work the next day anyway. <laughs> of course, <laughs> literally my life. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I need manager to go to therapy. I'm not even drinking a lot. It's just the mixture is what's gonna get me. Yeah, it's true. Make sure you eat food, then you'll oh, be yeah. good. That hey, I've already drink eaten. a liquid IV. I just have some. Coffee. I don't have those. I'll just drink water. Oh. Yeah. All right, we gotta end this thing. Any other final thoughts? No. No. Rat hole. Rat hole. Rest in peace, rat, rat hole. hole. Long live rat hole. <laughs> Long live. All right, guys. Well, hey, thank you all again for listening to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe, like, share, and leave a five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook, and all the other places at Always More Pod. Chris, where can we find you? You can find me on Instagram at Captain underscore CT Ford or TikTok at Christopher dot Lionheart. You will not find me on Parlor. Harley, where can oh. I find you? You can find me on, on Instagram at what Harley W U T Harley and TikTok at HarleyBean.co. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Timothy Lichty and on TikTok at Tim Lichty. It's L I E C H T Y. Thank you all again for listening and for being a part of the conversation. And remember, there's always more than this. Bye, everyone. Hey, bye. Ready's Rapple. Oh,